Live in Studio B, this is your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play on Tuesday, May 3rd. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Blaine Fowler. It is our pleasure now to welcome in the world traveler of a former professional basketball player, BYU all-time great, former NBA draft pick, Trent Plasta joins us over Zoom. Trent, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Yeah, what's up, guys? It's been a while, but always good to be with you and join the the Sports Nation crew. So I'm excited to chat with you for a few minutes. Trent, can you somehow figure out some more eligibility somewhere so that you can come back and play a little center for Mark Pope and BYU basketball? (laughs) Because they need some size, man. Listen, I, I try to stay fit, but I want no part of running up and down that floor again. I retired for a reason. I've played enough games in my life. If I wanted to still play, I'd still be playing. I want nothing to do with it. Plus, they couldn't afford me. Hey, wait, wait. So. And we we, we, oh, we we save the word elite on this show for for very few people, Trent. But I, I remember when you, you stepped on the scene here, and he, I think Trent was the first guy I called a freak. Oh. And that's a freak's a good thing, right? Trent, it's a compliment. At 6'11", yeah. Trent comes in here with a 41-inch vertical jump and the ability to run a 4.640. Somebody, that that is a freak. Freak, and it's okay to be called a freak, right, Trent? Is that okay? Yeah. Oh, I, listen, I... I've embraced the freak moniker a long time ago. Like I like <laughs> there's those that like slunters. I've walked, I'm a, I'm a proud freak. If that's a good thing to say, but that's, that's, I, I am a, a I, I think that's a fair, fair statement to some degree. <laughs> okay. Trent, let's now discuss the current BYU basketball rust roster because uh, it feels like it's slim pickings. Now a bunch of guys have left and, we think that there is potentially a freak athlete on that roster in Fusini Traore. So let's start with him. Is he the next guy that would step into that freak athlete role to lead BYU? Yeah, I think so. And first of all, congrats on the way you just pronounced that name. That was well done. Oh, thank uh, you. First of all, I was trying to, I could I could, I could do that. That was really <laughs> well done. But uh, but yes, I absolutely think so. I mean, he had a great freshman year. He's just a, a really great athlete. and Just seems like a really solid person overall. So. Uh, I, there's a lot of promise there. I think he's going to take a big step this next year. Um, I, I get the concern to some degree. I also think that, you know, you got to kind of, given the fact that Mark Pope has had a lot of success, you kind of got to pump the brakes a little bit on that. And, and he's earned that right to this point. So I, I, like the truth is always somewhere in the middle, right? So that's kind of where I stand on the scale. I'm not necessarily hitting the panic button. I'm not necessarily overly excited about losing seven people. I'm kind of right there in, in wait and see mode. What, what about – so there's two two freshman bigs that they brought in. The other is Atiki Ali Atiki, um, a little more raw perhaps than, than Foose, but longer. And he looks like he has a body that, that he's the kind of guy that could take them into the Big 12 and play. What's your analysis on Atiki in his freshman year? Yeah, I, I agree with you. And what's interesting to me is, like, from the times I played, I mean, like, big guys, if you look across the country these days, a lot of them are more of that, like, just raw athlete, rebounder, defender. You're not getting a lot of bigs anymore. Like, I mean, I'm not trying to say I was the best or worst or whatever, but, you know, I averaged 16 points a game or 17 points a game. Like, those bigs, they're they're not around anymore. Like, like you have a lot of, you know, like, the bigs you have that are really big guys, they are – they are rebounders, they are defenders, they are defensive specialists. You know, they are guys that are right around the rim. And both of those guys, I feel like, fit that mold. Foose is a little bit more skilled. He's more of a guy you could throw it into him and, and let him go. But, uh, yeah, they. I think that they, you know, athletically, they're going to stack up well. You need more of them. Two is not enough for the Big 12. You need four or five. Um, but uh, that's that's definitely a good start. Trent Placid is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Trent, I just talked about Mark Pope's success landing big-time recruits in the transfer portal. He's had great success with it at Utah Valley. That has extended to BYU. I mean, we're talking Matt Harms, Alex Barcelo, T. John Lucas, Jake Toulson. I kind of feel like he talked Yoli Childs back from going pro, which, you know, kind of feels like winning another transfer, if you will. Do you feel like he has it in him to replace that many positions? There are four open scholarships right now, so – He's been landing one or two. Do you feel like Mark Pope has it in him to fill all four of those spots with big time transfers? I mean, let me, let me put it this way: whether it's in him or not, he's going to fill those roster spots. So that he's going to fill those spots. Now, if it's, it's big time or not, I guess that's up for debate. I, I, I would agree with you that he's had a lot of success with the transfer portal. Um, so, like, I, I have, it's, like I said, it's wait and see, right? Like, it's a tall order to fill four transfer, like four scholarships with really high level transfer you know, portal kids. Uh, a lot of times you're in the transfer portal because you want 
more playing time. You want this, you want that, you want, and like to, to say that same message to four people, I think becomes a little bit more challenging because it could kind of come across maybe disingenuous. Like, okay, you're saying this to three other guys, like how many, how many shots are there in a game kind of a thing. But uh, I do believe that you can get four really quality individuals in those roles. And uh, so, and he's proven he could have the success doing it. So like, like I said, I'm, I'm going to wait and kind of reserve judgment on it all until like we see what happens. Obviously like the last couple of weeks has been hard to take with seven people, you know, saying that, you know, I don't want to be here anymore, but you kind of got to give the the other side of the coin time to develop as well. So I'm just kind of waiting and seeing how, how it all shakes out. But I do think he has the potential to do it for sure. Trent, I, I'm interested on your thoughts around the transfer portal. Like, you know, you, you played professional basketball. We were counting them up eight, eight different countries uh, over 10 years. So, so we're going back, you know, a, a decade, a little bit more than a decade to your time here. It wasn't like this. It didn't, it didn't seem like it's almost hard to keep a sixth or seventh man on a roster now because the sixth or seventh man is looking to get out, transfer without penalty and go be a starting five guy. What, what's your thought on the impact on college basketball? Is this good or bad? I mean, overall, like you, you got to give players the opportunity to to exercise the same rights as those coaches to my degree. Like if a coach gets to leave and, you know, go to another school and be eligible to coach right away, I think players should be too. So I, I think that that's, that's fair. And, and to be honest, when I was in school, yeah, it was a long time ago. I'm an old man now, but like people are transferring then. Like it, it's always been around. I think now it's just been heightened to some degree. Like the, the, the penalty is gone. So I think some kids that maybe didn't want to sit out a year, like would would you know, are more apt to leave. But uh, uh, I will say this, and this is not to bash anybody at BYU at all. I think seven kids leaving, whether they were leaving of their own choice, whether they were somewhat pushed out or whatever that may be, that's not what you want, right? That's not what you want at BYU to have seven kids leave. I think it's very normal to have a couple, two, three, maybe even four, but seven's too many. So. That's kind of where I sit with it. Does that, you know, hopefully it's an aberration, but uh, we'll see how it shakes out. But uh, the transfer portal at this point in time, it's it's a new it's a new age. It's obviously a lot of more uh, power to the players, and uh, I just think you got to to manage it correctly. So the name, image, likeness thing obviously is becoming more and more of a topic, and certainly factors into why guys are now more keen to transfer. Because frankly, other schools can say, "Hey, you come play for us, you can start." And we're going to make you money with this so-and-so huge company. Trent, what do you think about the involvement of NIL in pushing the narrative that you can always come over here where the grass is greener and find it better? What would you say to those guys? Or are, are you for this and for the players doing more of this? Yeah, I mean, NIL, I think it's a great thing. But, like, let's be honest, the, the transfer portal, if you are crushing it at your current university, right, you are probably going to have more NIL deals at your current place than you will likely at another place, right? Cause you're already a big name there. You're already established there. So those are not the kids I think that are, yeah, there's probably going to be exceptions to every rule. You know what I mean? But like the kids that are crushing it at their current university, you know, getting a lot of playing time, scoring a lot of points. Those aren't the ones that are usually like, Oh, I'm going to go bounce somewhere else. You know what I mean? That's not the way this is going. And then the ones that aren't playing are the ones that are more apt to leave. And they're probably not going to another place because Oh, we've got all this NIL money for you because you were so good at that previous school. You know, I mean, that's not the way it usually bounces out. But uh, I do think it's going to play a role. Um, obviously, you've got you know high-level recruits and things of that nature that maybe are disgruntled to have an opportunity to go somewhere else, and the NIL deal will come into play. But uh, like I said, it's part of the gig, right? And uh, you know, that's just the nature of the game now. I think BYU's positioned itself well. I I've seen a lot of really positive things come with BYU and the NIL, with you know the football team and others. So like, I think that they, at BYU can manage that really, really well and, and really be on the, the upside of that and be progressive as opposed to being reactive with it, which is a good thing. Trent, you, you played 10 seasons over in Europe and people don't get to get a chance to, to follow you um, as much when you're a, across the Atlantic ocean and over there playing. We, we mentioned it again, Italy, Croatia, Ukraine, Turkey, France, Germany, Japan, <laughs> And Lithuania, you spent you spent ten years over there. What was that experience like for you um, as a as a basketball player, but also as, as just a um, just as a human being in all these different places? Yeah, I mean, simply put, it was life changing. You know, I, I remember I going over there first. I started in Italy. 
I remember I showed up and like my whole world just got rocked. You know, I didn't serve a mission guys. So I didn't know what that was like. I didn't know. I, I didn't know going foreign countries. I went to France one time with BYU for like two weeks, which was not really a realistic thing. <laughs> and like, I remember, I remember showing up to Italy and I, you know, like I had this like American ego, which I still had to some degree, but like that America was the best at everything. We were the best at sports. We were the best at just every, this is the best. Right. And you quickly find out that uh, while that's somewhat true, it's also very much not that uh, there's a lot of really good, good ways of doing things and that other countries do some, some great things. And like my view of the world is just completely changed for the experiences I had over there, like to the point where like, it's, it's made me a better person to be able to, to, you know, really interact with all different cultures. I lived in Muslim countries. I lived in Buddhist countries. I've lived, you know, where religion is not really a big thing. I've lived, you know, I lived all over the world and just to see that the people are people, uh, everywhere. They all have kids. They all have families. They want them to do right. It kind of gives you a perspective of the world that you don't see when you're in America watching the news and everybody's like the worst, you know what I mean? So like, I, I really, really appreciated my time over there. Trent, Trent, citizen of the earth. Absolutely. Trent placed it and represent yes, BYU yeah. all over the, com- all over <laughs> yes, the globe. He's citizen yeah. of the earth. Yes. Trent, it's great to talk to you. I know you don't want to run up and down basketball courts, but your basketball analysis is awesome. So I think you should do this with us more often. Yeah, well, listen, I'm always open for the invite, you know. So, like, let me know how I can help. I'm always happy to help. But uh, you guys have a great day. I appreciate you having me on for a few minutes and uh, look forward to chatting more in the future. You got it. Trent so placed much, it Trent. on BYU Sports Nation. Hey, come-